Homestead Workshop. Today we're looking at a new shop toy that I picked up and that's going to be the Hobart Handler 210 MVP. So let's do a little un unboxing and we'll take a quick look. So it looks like right here on top, we've got our accessories pack, our, our grounding clamp. There's the, the MIG gun. They include a small spool of uh, .03 flux core wire. So we get started straight out of the box. Right here is the uh, the regulator. So if we start using shielded gas, it's actually what we're going to be using. It's actually a nice nice piece for coming included. The manual on the welder and the gun, as well as uh, the actual MVP plugs. We'll we'll take a look at that here in a few minutes and talk about uh, the reason why I actually went with this specific unit. Styrofoam packaging, not too exciting there. And the rest of this is going to be connected to this unit. So let's go ahead and get this handle, get this bad boy out of here. At this moment, I don't know the exact shipping weight, or I, I don't know the exact item weight on this. Uh, the shipping weight was 90 pounds through UPS. Uh, when I picked it up just now, that didn't seem quite right, but it was close. Uh, just invoice from Northern Tool Equipment. That's actually not who I purchased it through, but that's the original shipping invoice. And let's take a closer look. So originally the unit that I was looking at purchasing was the Hobart Handler 140, um, mainly because I'm, an, I'm new to this whole thing and that was from what I learned on the internet through my research, probably the best unit to run off 115 power, which my current workspace is just my apartment garage. Uh, that's all I had available to me. Um, however, I, I'm of the methodology buy once, cry once, you know, get what you're going to use and, you know, pay a little bit more for it if it's going to last you longer in the long run. So I ended up finding this unit, the 210 MVP, and what makes it the MVP is these plugs right here and this pattern design from Hobart where these different tips actually just connect and screw on to where it can use both 115 and 230 volt. Uh, now, the unit itself maxes out at 140 amps on the 115, and you get the full 210 if you're using a 230. So, it'll give me a little bit of room to grow, as well as if I move to a bigger shop and decide to start doing thicker materials, because this unit will go up to 3 8 inch steel. So that'll give me a little bit more room if I decide to do some bigger things outside of, you know, furniture or small shop projects like I'm currently doing. So here we're taking a look inside the machine. Um, I went ahead and installed the MIG gun lead, which needs this thumb screw loosened up in order to pass the lead all the way through. And you need to check and make sure there's not an exposed O-ring on this side Otherwise, you'll end up with a gas leak in the event of using uh, shielding gas. And then you just go ahead and tighten that down into place. It has this nice, uh, really easy left-hand tightened wheel if you're using uh, the large spools of wire. However, I am not. I'm just going to be using this little starter 
spool of flux core that they give you with the welder for one of my, my little shop projects here. So in that case, this screw washer and the large hub adapter comes off and the small spool is installed in its place. After installing the spool, which is gonna be mounted to where the wire is feeding underneath the bottom of the spool, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use this tool, this design here, to feed the wire through and set the tension headed into the gun so we can get started working on projects. It's also important to note the polarity right here. We've got positive and negative. Uh, currently, it's set up the way it came wired out of the box, which is for flux core, which is I'm, I'm going to be using uh, in the meantime. So it's already wired correctly for that, but it does refer to switching polarity in the instruction manual for using a shielded gas. All right, so lastly, we're going to be looking at this handy door chart that's inside to give us a kind of a quick cheat sheet and starting place on our settings for our material. It does have this reminder on your polarity to make sure you're using the right settings. And we're gonna go ahead and look down at our material being welded. We're using steel with flux core. So we're gonna come down here, steel flux core. It tells us no shielding gas required and then gives us settings for 230 and 115 volts, as well as our wire thickness. I'm using 0.8 millimeter wiring. And then we're gonna slide over on the chart based off our thickness, I'm using 1 8th. So if we come down here, it's gonna tell us 740 for our voltage and wire speed. So coming around the face of the machine, we have our voltage to seven and our wire speed to 40. Now I don't have a whole lot of experience welding, virtually none at this point, uh, but based off my research, this chart is mostly just kind of a starting place to kind of get you headed in the right direction. Obviously this is something that's gonna have to be picked up by feel. So if you feel like you're not setting down enough of a puddle, you might wanna crank up that wire speed a little bit to give you a little bit of more metal on your workpiece. Thanks for tuning in at this uh, Homestead Workshop. Quick look at the Hobart MVP 210. Uh, hopefully we got some more projects coming up here in the shop that will make use of this bad boy. And hopefully uh, more videos in the future to go along with it. Thanks for stopping by.